Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. So about four years or so ago, I did a video where I showed how to put handles onto a cutting board using the router table. And that video has generated an awful lot of comments because I failed to show the results at the end of the video. And so, it, yes, it was a colossal oversight by my part. I should have showed the outcome of following the process to show that it actually works, and I didn't. So this video, I am going to rectify that. I am going to show you my new process that I use to put handles on a cutting board, which is a little bit more simple and doesn't use a ton of math. If any math at all and it produces the same results I think in less time. So all right let's go ahead and let's first talk about why I'm sitting here in the office rather than out in the garage. Well simply put it is about seven degrees outside right now and so it is a lot easier to film this part of the video here in the office rather than out in the garage. So what I will be doing is walking through the process here and then cutting between clips of me actually doing in the garage. I actually just did a number of cutting boards not so long ago Ago. So there'll be a couple different boards that I will feature here showing you the process, but I promise that I will show you the outcome at the end. So the process starts with taking the object you want to put handles on. So in my case, this is going to be a cutting board. So I'll just continue to refer to it as a cutting board. I have a board that is one and one quarter inch thick, which puts the center line at five eighths of an inch. So I usually use my pocket square to mark the center line across the width of the board. That just makes things simpler. If you don't have one of those, you can certainly mark it and then use any ruler to make sure you have a flat line across the center. The next step is to find the center of the object that you are cutting, in my case, again, the cutting board. And so the easiest way I have found to do this is to use a center rule to mark the center line of the material. So what I do is I set the ruler up against the end of the cutting board. I look at each side. I make sure that each measurement is the same or as close to identical as I can get. Then I find the zero point on that center rule and then I just mark that. And I create a little X right there that tells me what is the center of the cutting board in terms of the thickness and the width. And so from there, I measure out two and a half inches on one side, two and a half inches out on the other side, which gives us our five inch total width of our handles. And so that tells tells us where the handles on the left and the right side stop. And so that is where you ultimately need to set up your router bit and your stop blocks based off those two measurements. Because we are doing this sort of math-ish up front, we don't need to do any computations later on. We will use those reference marks to set up the stop blocks and the fence on the router table, which we will get to next. So the second step in the process is to set the distance of the router fence to the center line of the router bit. And so this is why we drew the center line across the end of the cutting board. Now I know that this thickness and the half of the thickness is five eighths of an inch for this specific cutting board. So what we wanna do is we wanna make the distance from the center line of the bit to the fence five eighths of an inch. And that'll give us a nice clean cut and run the center of the router bit down the center of the cutting board. Now it is best to make sure your fence is as parallel as you can get to the router bit so that you get a nice clean line on your finished product. The next step in the process is to set the stop blocks on the left and the right hand side. Now in the previous video, this is where I used a bit of fairly complicated math to come up with a formula to make some measurements and it required a bit of extra work. And I have abandoned that process almost entirely. That is why we marked the left and the right hand side when we started the process. Now that we have those marks, we know where the bit needs to start and stop when you're moving the cutter board along so that we could use the cutting board itself to stand up the stop blocks. And so what I do is I take the board as I push it up against the router bit, I slide it to one end, usually to the, I slide it to the right side. I mark the side of the cutting board on the left hand side. That is the distance to the, to the farthest on that side. Then I take the cutting board I slide it to the left side and then I mark the right hand side of the cutting board and that gives us the outside boundaries of how far we want to move left and right to make that groove. 
And so rather doing a bunch of complicated math and knowing the width of the cutting board and having it and adding the distance and knowing the size of the bit, we're literally using the size of the board itself and the size of the bit to do all of the work. And so it's a lot easier and is a lot more quick to set up. Once we have the lines, we simply attach the uh, stop blocks with some sort of clamps to make sure they don't move, make sure they're locked down. So once we have all this stop block set up and everything's good to go, I do a little bit of a dry run before I turn the machine on. What I do is I take the cutting board and I hold it up vertically against the fence. I pinch it with my hands and make sure that it is completely perpendicular to the router table. And then I drop the cutting board down kind of abruptly to create a mark with the bit. And then I turn it over and I make sure that that mark is in that center line of the cutting board. If it is to one side or the other, then you need to adjust your fence to make sure that it is completely centered. Then I hold the cutting board onto the router table. I slide it to one side to where the stop block is, making sure the router bit is at its outside limit. And then I do that on the other side. If anything needs to be adjusted, now is the time to do it because you have not cut the board yet and you haven't turned the machine on. So once we have everything set up and we're confident with our dry run, it is time to set the machine up and get it ready to go. And so generally what I do is I take one eighth inch cuts at a time to get me up to the final depth, which is about a half an inch, because that is the height of my router bit. So once we're ready and everything's good to go, I turn the machine on, I let the bit get up to speed. I take the cutting board and I hold it up against the router fence about an inch or two above the bit itself. I make sure that it is up against the stop block on the right side for me. And then I slowly lower it down, uh, trying to make sure that it remains parallel to the uh, router table itself. And then once I make contact, I drop one corner and I lower the other corner until it is up against the table. And then I slide it from right to left. That is the direction that my bit moves. So that is the safest cut. And then when I get to the end, I generally tilt the board up making sure that it is still right up against the fence. If you do lean the, the board one way or the other, you will get some artifacting on the corners. It's not a big deal. Generally, you can fix it with a little bit of sanding, but if you can pick it straight up, that is certainly the best option. And so all I do is I repeat that three or four more times, raising the bit an eighth of an inch each time until I get to the final depth. And if you do this repeatedly and comfortably each time, you'll end up with a handle that is a very well uh, cut out. It is nice and smooth. A little bit of burning maybe if you wait a little bit too long on the corners but not too much. Nothing that you can't clean up with a little bit of sandpaper at the end. Well that was my process for creating handles on my cutting boards and as promised it does not have really any math involved whatsoever and it is super simple and super easy to set up. That is I think the most important thing for me is it is quick, it is reproducible, and it just allows me to pound out a bunch of handles whenever I need to and and that's really the name of the game, I think, at the end of the day, is simplicity. If you are curious what the other process looked like and the math involved, well, then I encourage you to go ahead and watch this video right here. Other than that, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for getting this far. Don't forget to be inspired.